Welcome to the Book of Shoftim, Chapter 15, Perek Tet Vav. We've seen how Shimshon starts getting a bit violent, and by a bit I mean very violent, and he has issues because he has a plishti wife, and that leads to some trouble. In this chapter, Shimshon says, okay, I want to come visit my wife, but her father says, no, 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 no. And similar to the story of Yaakov and Leah, the father-in-law is like, no, 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 you can't marry this woman, who's, by the way, already Shimshon's wife, why don't you marry her sister? But in this case, Shimshon is already married to her, but her father's like, no, 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 you cannot stay married to your wife, you gotta marry her sister. Kind of creepy. Uh, but uh, Shimshon does not like this, and so in that case, he's like, I'm done with these plishtim. He takes 300 foxes, Shimshon catches 300 foxes, and foxes have very big tails. In the middle of the night, Shimshon takes these foxes and he ties a burning torch to the tail of each of these foxes. And then he lets them go free into the territory of Plishtim. Now, what happens when a fox has a uh, torch, a fire, a burning torch on its tail? I have never tried this myself, but it's fair to say that the fox runs really, really fast. And so, the foxes run all over the fields of Plishtim and they destroy a huge amount of the Plishtim's territory. And uh, he, basically everything is destroyed. And so the Plishtim get very angry and they say, uh, they get very mad. They go and they punish the father, his father-in-law. They're like, why'd you cause us so much trouble? They punish him, they kill him and, uh, and, and, his, uh, and his daughter, which is terrible. Uh, Shimshon says, you know what, you guys now killed her, and he kills many, many more Plishtim. At this point, Plishtim realize they have a problem, and the problem's name is Shimshon. So they gather their army, and they come up to Yehuda, and they're like, look, Jews, we've got nothing against you. However, your guy, Shimshon, uh, we want him. We want him now. And the people of Yehuda are like, whoa, 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 we have nothing against you. We know you guys control us. We're not messing with you. So they take 3,000 people from Yehuda, and they come to Shimshon, who's living in a place called Sela Eitam, the Rock of Eitam, and they say to Shimshon, what have you done? You know that the Plishtim control us, so why have you provoked them to, and, 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 and set their fields on fire and killed so many of them? And Shimshon is like, hey, 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 guys, no problem. You wanna turn me into Plishtim? You wanna like play nice with them? No problem. Tie me up here, but I need a promise from you. You're not doing anything to me. They're like, no, Yehuda are like, no, we're not going to do anything to you. So they take these two thick ropes and they tie Shimshon's hands and they deliver him handcuffed to the Plishtim. And as he comes close to the Plishtim, the Plishtim cheer and they're like, yay, we got the bad guy Shimshon. But he's so strong that Hashem is, is, helps him rip off the huge, huge ropes on his hands. He goes and he destroys the Plishtim, he breaks free, uh, he doesn't even have a weapon. He finds a bone of a donkey, a, a jawbone of a donkey, Lechi Chamor, and he is able with this bone of a donkey to kill 1,000 Plishtim with the bone of a donkey. And he calls it Ramat Lechi, the place, the mountain of the Lechi, of the uh, jawbone of the, uh, named for the jawbone of the donkey. And then Shimshon is like, oh my gosh, I'm so thirsty. I fought all day. I'm about to die from thirst. He turns to Hashem and he says, Hashem, you helped me and did a miracle for me. And now I'm just going to die here from thirst. That seems like uh, kind of anticlimactic. Uh, and so Hashem says, look, similar to the story with Moshe, Hashem opens the, uh, the uh, rock with the lechi that he has with the bone of the donkey and water comes out, and he calls the place Ein HaKore, the place of the person who called out to Hashem. And uh, Shimshon then judges B'nai Israel for 20 years. That's the end of chapter 15, Perik Tet Vav. So, in short, Shimshon, in the days of Ketir Chitim, in the days of harvest, wants to visit his wife. The father of his Plishti wife says, no, you cannot stay married to her, you have to marry her sister. Shimshon gets angry, takes 300 foxes, ties torches to their tails, sends the foxes into the fields of Plishtim, into the vineyards of Plishtim. Everything gets burned down by the foxes. Then Shimshon, for just uh, because he's uh, so angry, uh, th sorry, then the Plishtim kill Shimshon's wife and her father. 
Shimshon goes on to kill many Plishtim. Plishtim send to Yehuda, hey, give us this lunatic who's killing so many of us. Yehuda surround Shimshon with 3,000 people. Shimshon's like, wait, are you guys going to do anything to me? They're like, no. They handcuff him with these big ropes. Deliver Shimshon to Plishtim. Yehuda deliver Shimshon to Plishtim. Shimshon rips the ropes off because he's so strong. And he takes a bone, a jawbone of a donkey, kills a thousand Plishtim, is about to die from thirst. Hashem makes a miracle and the jaw of the donkey brings out of the rock a lot of water. He calls it a nakore. That is chapter 15 for you. More action coming up in next chapter.